All right, folks, so in this video, we're going to take another look at the Retivas RT95. This is a very popular uh, dual band mobile ham radio for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Uh, largely given its price point, this radio sells for about 105, 110 bucks, depending upon where you get it. And it's also sold under various brand names. I believe this radio is made by Anytone, so Anytone has a variant. Um, as well as this Retivas, and some other companies may have some as well. But uh, again, it's very popular radio, uh, given its price point and performance, 25 watts out. And we've done a couple of different video tests of this, and uh, power output is good, spectra purity is good. Um, it's relatively easy to program. You can use Chirp to program it. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at its receive capability in terms of a metric called SINAD and that is signal noise and distortion uh, ratios that you look at to measure a repeater's sensitivity and ability to produce an audible signal. Before we get too far into the conversation, I did want to mention that I was contacted by Retivas and they asked if I would do a video review of this particular product. This video is, a, um, is another video in the series of videos that we've done on this particular radio. So what that means in simple terms is Retiva sent this radio to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. And if you're the type of person who was triggered by sponsored YouTube video reviews, you might want to go watch some cat videos. Okay, so for this test, what we are going to do is we are going to inject a signal into the antenna port. And we're going to control the level of this signal so that we can measure what we call uh, SINAD, as I, as I mentioned. And we're looking for uh, a 12 dB audible signal. And the way we're going to measure that is, is that we have this cable coming into this external speaker port. And we have this going into our computer. And we're going to use some software that will isolate that signal. It will do a comparison between the signal, signal noise, and distortion. And it will tell us at the lowest level of input what this radio can produce a 12 dB audible tone that is listenable by the user. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're gonna quickly take a look at the Retivas RT95 manual to get some specifications. So on page 29, we see the receiver specifications here. And the first line is sensitivity. And this is a measurement for a 12 dB synad. And that is going to be the audible tone or the audio tone that we wanna be able to listen to uh, independent of any noise and or distortion. And the rating for the wideband, which is what we're going to test here today, is a signal of equal strength or less than 0.25 microvolts should be able to produce a 12 dB signal. Now you might be saying, well, what the heck is 0.25 microvolts? So what we've done is, is that we pulled up a calculator that will allow us to compare microvolts to dBm. Now we're going to use the Tiny SA Ultra to inject this signal into our radio in order to get this reading. And here we've done the work on the calculator. And so we say 0.25 microvolts at a 50 ohm impedance. And that's exactly what we're going to be using here is a negative 119, so negative 119 dBm. Now there's some stuff after the 119, 0.030899. We're not gonna worry about that. What we're just gonna do is we're gonna test, but our target, our pass-fail criteria is going to be this negative 119 dBm. Okay, so on the screen, which you can see here, are two pieces of software. The first one is the Tiny SA Display Capture software that allows us to see what we're doing on the Tiny SA to make it easy for folks to follow along. And then the second is our Synad meter. And this is all connected to the radio. So the first thing we need to do is take a look at our Tiny SA interface and set our frequency. The frequency we are going to be testing at today is 146.52 megahertz and that is now set on our screen. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go down to the external gain setting and we have a 40 dB attenuator in line with our tiny SA. The reason we do that is if we want to lower the output strength from the tiny SA itself to a level that's stable so we are going to do negative 40 and that is the value of our attenuator and we are going to set that. 
Then when we come back on, our level now says negative 58.1, when before it said negative 18.1. So we subtracted that 40 dB based off of our attenuation. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to set our level at negative 119. We want to be really careful to use the negative sign here. Setting a signal that's too high into the antenna port of our radio could damage the internals of the radio. So we're just going to do uh, times one. And now you can see our frequency is set, our level is set, our attenuation is accounted for. The next thing under mod, M-O-D, that's for modulation, we are going to click that and we are going to pick FM. Now you'll notice that there's an FM deviation setting here for three kilohertz, and that's fine. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to point out is that we are going to generate an audible tone or an audio tone of one kilohertz or 1000 hertz, and you can see that. So now I'm going to hit back, and what we're going to do now is, is that we are going to turn on the signal that's coming out of there. And when we did that, hopefully you can see on the capture software for the sign ad measurement, we now have a spike at uh, our one kilohertz reading. And that's what we're going to use for the sign ad measurement. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the volume on the radio up a little bit and see if we can hear this. Okay, so here we are injecting a negative 119 dBm into the radio from the tiny SA. And when we look at the software, what we can see is, is that we're hanging around 8 to 9 uh, dB of audio tone. And according to our measurement, we want to measure this at a 12 dB tone. So what we're going to do is that we are going to increase our power. So let's just go up to, to negative 117. When we do that, it goes up to 13, 15, 16 dBm. You can see it bouncing around a little bit. Let's go ahead and drop it down to 118. And that is hanging right around the 12 dBm mark. Sometimes it's a little bit below, sometimes it's a little bit higher. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a pass, even though officially we're supposed to be at negative 119. There may be some error in the coaxial cable that I'm using, or maybe the audio cable that's going from the output of the radio into the, uh, into the computer. But this is looking pretty good from my perspective, and it's close to the rated specification. Now, one of the things that I want to mention is, is that we are testing the advertised sign ad level here. We are not saying that this radio here is any better or any worse because you'll see different radios have different sign ad values. But this one appears to be operating as specified, which all in all is a good thing. So again, another positive mark for the Retivis RT95. Okay, silly me, I almost forgot to do the measurement at the 70 centimeter band. So we've set a frequency for 432.1 megahertz. And here you can see at negative 119, we are right around that 12 dB mark, a little bit higher than we need to be there. So let's continue to go lower with our attenuated signal. Uh, 120, and uh, we're still a little bit above the 12 mark, so let's go down to 121. And that is a little bit low, so maybe it's 120.5. Let's do a negative 120.5 times 1. And that looks to be about where we want to be. So it's a little bit better than advertised on the 440 band. And folks, that's going to wrap up this video. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again.